kind of nice weather today. I figured I'd come back out here to the woods and try a couple of these trails that I had problems with with this chair before I made the modifications. I'm curious now to see if the tires and the controller and adjusting the ride height will make any difference on these. For any of you that happened to see the video I posted on Twitter, it was unpublished on the YouTube account. But basically I made a video describing the situation with this chair and essentially how I got scammed by Innovation in Motion. Uh, the chair was not operational. I was however able to go over to a friend's place that had a milling machine and we were able to sort of <laughs> make a patch so that this thing can at least work for now. And it's a temporary thing until I can get the parts, but at least we're back rolling again. It's, it's one of those things that like, if I had paid a machine shop to do it, they either wouldn't have done it or it would have cost a ton of money. So it pays to have friends that have access to equipment, you know, so you can get stuff fixed. Because all of my shop equipment is still buried in storage. And there's no electricity in the storage unit, so I wouldn't be able to use any of it anyways. The hill that is in question is right up here behind me. Last time when I tried to go up this, I was using the stock tires, stock controller, and stock ride height, so my center of gravity was a little bit higher. And I wasn't able to get up it until I let a ton of air out of the tires. So I'm curious now that we have more power, lower center of gravity, and better tires, if we can do it without airing down. Now this may not look like much on camera, but it's fairly steep and covered in this pea gravel, which makes it really difficult. That worked insanely well. I guess there was one other thing that I hadn't put on this chair yet, and that was a gyroscope. So, lowering the seating about two inches, getting better tires, a more powerful controller, and having the gyroscope on there, which I could actually tell <laughs> is probably a lot of why it worked, makes all the difference in the world. Basically, you hit full throttle. When your tires start spinning, you just let off a little bit and then let the gyroscope do the work. And it kind of slips one tire, kind of puts power to the other one, and you basically just walk right up it no problem at all. And these tires are at their max pressure, which on these tires is actually six PSI. These are crazy thick rubber. It's been such a nice day today. Just gotta spend as much time out here as possible. I wound up doing another interview with one of the local news channels here. They're doing a story about commercial vehicles that park in disabled parking spaces. Now, after the last go around, I was somewhat skeptical about doing it again because <laughs> last time I was on the news, they linked to my YouTube channel and all the hate comments that were appearing is the reason I had to turn on comment approval. I turned it on for just that one video, but then people would find other videos and comment on those. So I had to do it for the entire channel, which is why if you make a comment, it doesn't always show up right away. But it actually kind of works out better because then I can see every comment as it goes through and reply to it. If they happen automatically, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to find the comments and actually respond to them. Because right now, I mean, the channel's still pretty small, so it's nice to be able to go through and actually talk with you guys. They came out here to where I live and did an interview with me uh, it wasn't specifically about this place, just kind of in general around the city, how UPS and the post office and Amazon delivery drivers and everyone are parking in these spaces. Well, it's kind of funny, right when they got here and started to set up, a big truck came in and backed into one of the disabled spots. So the reporter and the cameraman went running over there to talk to the guy. He didn't seem to care at all that he was being filmed. And he was like, yeah, I'll just be back in like five minutes, you know, whatever. If someone needs to park here, they can come find me and I'll move which is a pretty flawed argument if you think about it. If someone needs to use a disabled space, you're expecting them to park their van somewhere, get out, come find you, who knows which store you're in, 
and then have you move your truck, get back in their vehicle, move it into the stable spot, and then they can get out and go, up, go on about their day. If you could park somewhere to get out and go find the guy, then you wouldn't need the disabled parking space. Anyways, preaching to the choir. They're working on a whole big story, and he's talked to, I guess, the Portland police and a few other people, and trying to figure out what people can do when they see this happening. Because right now, around here, the police do not write tickets for disabled parking violations. Anytime I call when someone's blocking my lift or parking in a space or whatever, the times the cops do show up, they do not write tickets. They do not tow. All they do is like talk to the person. And apparently in today's society, especially around here, the attitude people have is who cares? But that story is probably not gonna air, he said until maybe the 22nd of this month. He's doing a little bit more research and talking to a number of people about it. I'm gonna try and get a copy of it when it does air and I'll upload it to the channel here. I feel like if people started getting the fine, which is actually $860, if that started being enforced, pretty sure the problem would resolve itself very quickly. After some careful inspection, I noticed that our LEDs seem to be dead. I put these things together at the same time we built the other ones that are on the bridge. And as you can see, this one is barely glowing, like almost imperceivable to the camera. Now it's on the floor. And this one, it's about the same. Those didn't last very long. I should probably go back over there and collect those things because I could reuse the LEDs and the magnets. Well, I've come back out here to this bridge. I'm gonna collect my LED modules and magnets. Uh, batteries only lasted about, I think it was about a week maybe, so since they're right here where I can get to them, might as well recover them and use them again. All right, I can see one of them here. It's just barely glowing. There we go. Just a little bit of red, that's it. From what I've been able to figure out so far, the batteries that were attached to the lights in my apartment where it was warm, uh, they are long since dead. And the red ones seem to work the longest because they use the least amount of power. But if you look at these ones I collected, we're still getting green and even blue on some of them. So it's interesting that maybe the colder temperature, see there's blue, the colder temperature somehow made them last longer. I know it normally affects the output power, but I don't know. It's a very strange thing. And there we go. Basically all of them are still working. These are the ones that were outside. And these two have been in here where it's warm. And they are completely dead. There's no light whatsoever coming out of these. But all of these still work. And we're getting green, a little bit of blue. Blue takes the most power to operate. It's just really peculiar. Okay, this is definitely getting a bit ridiculous. I wanna figure out how fast this chair is going. So I've got a couple of high-end GPS units that I've rubber banded to a piece of cardboard so I can hold on to it. And we're gonna see if these will give us any meaningful data as to how fast this chair actually is. Now, one of these GPS units is bouncing between 6.8 and 8.2 miles an hour, and the other one's anywhere between 6.9 and 7.8. And, I mean, in an area where there's no trees or obstructions to the sky, uh, I guess GPS isn't really gonna work that well. One of the units cost like 500 bucks, and the other one was probably about 350. I think we'll probably just have to stick with the counting rotations with the film. So. We'll go ahead and say we're accurate with speed. I'm not sure how else to check it at this point. Maybe what I need to find is some sort of high accuracy radar gun that is capable of measuring really low speeds. Although thinking about that, the way radar works, it's not very good at low speeds. So there actually may not be something like that that exists. We'll just stick with the math and the tape and the camera. I don't see how that could be inaccurate. I mean, unless somehow the circumference of the wheels changes as I move, but you would think they'd stay around, right? You agree?